Well, I have the honor and the privilege of being with Roy Hofberger, one of the founding fathers of the Institute for Christian and Jewish Studies, who has done an extraordinary mitzvah by writing a memoir. And when you initially told me, Roy, that you were writing this book, I thought, well, that's a nice pastime, and good luck on that. And I had no idea that you were going to crank out a volume of such depth of such breadth that not only discloses an enormous amount about yourself and your life, but also provides a window into Baltimore and the struggles of urban America and a whole breadth of some of the most exciting dimensions of the city that cannot be fully understood. What led you to write this book? Clearly, you have been a very busy man with all kinds of involvements in virtually every aspect of, of urban life and, and the city and Maryland. Um, there's not much that, that you have not put your finger into. To take this time to write a, a book was you know, quite something. Why did you write this? The simple reason for writing the book was I was losing my short-term memory. That bothered me. So I said, well, if I'm losing my short-term memory, what about my long-term memory? Um, do I have good recall of some of the important things that I know I've done? Clearly, um, issues around religion and living a moral life have been central to you. Yes, I have been. And I want to know, wh why does religion matter to you so much? Well, it matters because uh, it's the essence of my being. I mean, everything I do and write about in this book is framed around an attitude that I have. It, it's partly religious, but partly just a good set of ethics and morals that were given to me by my mother and father. I couldn't, uh, in my early years, uh, tell you where their philosophy came from, but it made sense to me. Um, it it um, was something that I know my mother and father held dearly, uh, and if it was important to them, I began to realize it was something that uh, I should hold uh, dear to me. And while I, until I joined the ICJS, um, and you all uh, invited me to be a founding member. I never really was concerned about the source of some of these nice moral and ethics, ethics stories uh, that were the way I wanted to live my life. I just knew they were the right things to do because my mother and father told me they were the right things to do. and. Um, but when I became more interested in educating myself about other religions, which is what uh, the ICJS is all about, to learn that uh, religions of the other, of the other fellow uh, are to him just as valid as uh, your beliefs, even though they may differ from your beliefs. So, Roy, the title of your book is The Measure of a Life, and you've taken your own measure here. Um, how do you pass that legacy on to your kid? To not only talk the talk, but to walk the walk. Uh, if your children see the kind of life that you live, and you really have an obligation to expose them to it uh, as early on as you think they can understand why you're doing what you're doing and why you're saying what you're saying, but they see you do it. Um, that's the best chance you have. Well, Roy, um, both you and Mel Sykes at a very early stage in the life of the ICJS said, that if the Institute for Christian and Jewish Studies is doing its work well, Christians will become better Christians by learning about Judaism, and Jews will become better Jews by learning about Christianity. That's correct. That's correct.
because the bottom line I find in religion is um, be a good guy. You know, understand the other, tolerate the other. Not only tolerate them, but if you can, love them. Um, and accept the differences that he has. And in that way, you learn to serve the other. And that's what my book is all about, my service to my fellow man. What is your aspiration for the ICJS? And what do you hope we would accomplish when we look back 25 years, 50 years, 100 years from now? I think um, the mission of the ICJS is on target. That uh, we've got to understand the other. Um, uh, basically, um, not because somebody might say something that uh, appeals to your emotions, but appeals to your intellect. What you really know uh, and learn about the other religion that uh, is history. So, Roy, in your book, you chart a number of ups and downs in your life and there have been great ups and there have been great downs. What gives you hope? What has over and over again gotten you up in the morning? Well, the task is never done. <laughs> There's not a morning that I get up and uh, to see really how many issues there are out there that I can't begin to do anything about and I try to pick out in my mind where is there a gap in what's going on in the world and um, that I can really do something about rather than curse what's happening that I can shed some light on what's happening and you'd be amazed um, that if you have the resources or you know how to raise the resources that can you can gather people of like mind and some of different minds to get together to see how you undertake uh, in a in a reasonable way a problem which um, starts locally it really most of these problems start locally and then they get um, um, a worldwide aspect to them, but uh, there is always a local aspect where you feel that, little me, what can I do to solve this is now a global problem. And if you undertake it on a local basis, you deal with things that are within your grasp, that are in your life, or you take your life and, and extend yourself a little bit but within reason where you say hey I, I can I can do something about that. Well Roy you, you've demonstrated that a grand journey begins with taking the first step and that nothing is real unless it's local. That you don't fly at an altitude of 30,000 feet you come down and plant your feet firmly in the issues that you experience face to face and your willingness to look those hard issues eyeball to eyeball um, is um, inspiring and ennobling. So I really thank you for um, writing this book and for sharing your thoughts with us and we trust that the multitudes will be inspired to pick up your book and to read it and take to heart the teachings that you have to offer. From your lips to the multitudes uh, ears, I hope they do too. Uh, but let me, let me thank the ICJS for really having stimulated my interest in Toro. Because what you said before, you not only by, by our getting together and talking and learning from one another, stimulate your interest in the other's religion, you stimulate your interest in your religion. When I realized that I knew very little about uh, the background coming from scripture of why I did what I did and, and what motivated me in terms of uh, serving the other fellow. I attribute that to my exposure to those issues uh, being on the board of the ICJS. So you, you, the organization is to be, in my mind, thanked and credited for having gotten me on this trail. 
well, Roy, um, you're the kind of traveler we always want to have at our side, and we look forward to new adventures with you. Thank you.